Hi, my name is Adam Richardson and I'm creator of the Neftali Web Framework. In this screencast we'll look at how to add client-side validation to a web form using Neftali's RESTful API. Here we have a web form we've wired up in a previous screencast. It's the contact us form for Fabulo Coffee. You'll see it has a name field, email field, website field, and a message field. Currently, server-side validation is handled by ports in the PHP code, and if we try and submit this form without any fields uh, having values, we see some error feedback. Uh, we see the name, email, and address fields were not valid. We can look at the code that handles this. Here we see we have the ports that handle the validation, the name, email, mess website, and message ports. It would be nice if we didn't have to duplicate all of the server-side code logic on the client side to enhance the form. Fortunately, in Neftali, we don't have to duplicate any of this. Every single Neftali code behind page enables a RESTful API that allows for validation. And I'm going to show you how that works right now. Actually, I have the, as an example, the Neftali website open. And under the REST API tab, I'm going to click the JSON error feedback for an invalid search using the search form on this page. So the search for the Neftali website is here as an example. And you see we're at the search page, search index.php. Normally you'd see the search results. However, we've added a get parameter, and mode equals validate. That tells Neftali this is a validation request, not a standard page request. Then you'll see that we tell it which ports we're interested in validating. In this case, we're interested in validating the Q port. And then you'll see the value of Q. In this particular case, uh, we, it was just set to something greater than 50, so you'd see the error feedback. Well, here's the result. We see the JSON encoded text. Uh, first, the name of the port. So in this case, it was Q and we see the error message generated for this particular request. If this port was valid, you would get an empty array. So, how can we use this to add client-side validation? You could develop your own uh, JavaScript code. However, Neftali does provide a plugin for jQuery, which does facilitate the process, and let's see how we could do that. Here's the page that has the contact form currently, and I've added a, some quick template code. Here you'll see I've added the plugin for jQuery, and here's how you'd use it. You just find that form that you want to validate, and you call validate and pass in three functions. This plugin works using an unblur methodology in the sense that when you leave a field, it then uses Neftali's API to send a request and see if the value in that field is valid. If it is valid, it will call the render valid function. And it passes in the field, uh, the jQuery object. And if it's invalid, it's going to call the render invalid function and it would pass in the field and the corresponding error message. There's also the option to highlight error. This is a case used for a little bit more complex uh, rendering situations, and we'll get to that at the end of the screencast. I've put together some code already just to save some time, and let me paste that in, and let's upload this and see what this buys us. Notice again we didn't change any of the PHP code, we didn't add any code to the markup, and we're going to reload this page and see what happens. Notice if I leave that name field, it now runs that validation behind the scenes using Neftali's REST based API, and it shows us the error message. In this case, name is required and cannot be left blank. Let me add something to the name field. I'll just say test. And notice 
it's after leaving that field taken away the error message and I'd left the email field and it also provided an error message. Right now it says email is required and cannot be left blank. What if I put in something so it's not blank but it's still not a valid email address? Notice it again updated the error message. Now it says email only accepts valid email addresses as input. So you see uh, I'll put in something else here for a website. Uh, we add the website and here you go, website only except a single line of basic text, no in HTML input allowed. So we see we, we have validation now which helps the user. They don't have to actually try submitting the form before they can fix something. And we didn't have to add uh, very much code at all. We didn't have to change the PHP in any way. So let me add a test address there just for the sake of example. And test message. And if I click this now, voila, it worked. So we have client-side validation. I did bring up a more complicated example, though, that I'd get to at the end. The Neftali website uses a little bit more interactivity because I actually have it set up so that there are pings used to round out this graphic and some divs also uh, to provide this error text. The problem with this is if we actually showed error, mess, error uh, text for all of the invalid fields, by the time I go through all these, cycle through, those images are so large that they would clutter up the user space and actually hurt the user experience. So what do we do? That's why you saw in the earlier example the highlight error option. And let me show you the code for the Neftali website. More code, but essentially the same thing. Notice we have render invalid, we have render valid, and again, highlight error functions that we've put in place. The only difference is I'm actually using the highlight error function here, and what it handles is making sure that only one balloon is shown at a time. The way that highlight error works is when you put focus on an input, if that field is invalid, then you will have this highlight error function called. So as we saw on the Neftali page, only the uh, field that's currently in focus displays the error message. That's when it's most useful to the user, when they're actually going to do something about that value, when they're going to edit it, update it. So we see if we highlight email, now the email error message is displayed. So you see, we had to add very little code. Again, here's the JavaScript that we added. And we now have all of that server-side logic for validation in use in our pages and helping out users on the client side. Thank you for watching.